Hello, everybody. My name is Christopher Saunders, and this is the Connecticut Sports Talent Show, where we talk all things talents in Connecticut. And this is the Defensive Player of the Week in Week 3 for high school football. And I'm pleased to have on the senior linebacker who had quite the day, and we'll get into that, Luke uh, Mayer, who, you know, as I mentioned, for Granby Canton, a linebacker, and his performance was five tackles, three forced fumbles, two return for touchdowns. Uh, Luke, thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me. You know, now you're a multi-sport athlete and, you know, we're going to talk about your time, obviously, with Canton, because that's the high school that you're at with Granby Canton beating the co-op. Um, but before we get into that, I just want to ask real quick, as far as your performance, man, I mean, that's quite the day to have. And I know you did some stuff on the offensive side, too, but defensively to have three fumbles, four fumbles, two return for touchdowns, that usually doesn't happen that much. Yeah, I mean, I just kind of was right at the right place, right time kind of thing. I mean, my players were making plays for me, like stripping the ball, getting the ball free. Mm -hmm. It felt good, though. felt great to, to have that day. Now, leading up to the season, I know last year, last year was a tough season for you guys. I know losing in the quarterfinal to Torrington, you know, Coach Gaetan, who I'll see this week because I'm doing Torrington Crosby, you know, they were a very good team with Seminich, Rosado, and all those guys. And that, you know, was a back-and-forth affair. Um, being a part of that game, man, and then being able to come back this year, do you feel like it was kind of like a, a learning moment for the entire team on kind of what's expected to get beyond just the quarterfinals? Oh, for sure. Uh, they ran that single wing T on us, which kind of isolated our linebackers a lot. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that just really gave a chip on our shoulder, especially at backers to make plays and really step up this year. Were there times during that game, like you said, because the single wing is difficult because there's multiple players that could get it. Like I mentioned, there was Seminich, there was Rosado, there was Clink Scales. It could have gone to one of three. For you, how were there times during the game where you were just getting so mad because you were like, I don't know who's getting it, and I'm just going wherever I can? Yeah, it was, yeah, it was definitely a struggle. I mean, yeah, they had a lot of athletes out there and uh, a big line to match it, so... Yeah, it was a, definitely a tough one because, yeah, what you're saying, it's frustrating. Mm -hmm. You don't know who's getting the ball, and you got a lot of people coming at you. So you just got to do what you got to do to work with it. As the offseason started, Luke, um, I'm sure Coach Shortell was saying how you were going to be one of the main guys and one of the key cogs of the defense offense. But since you're Defensive Player of the Week, we'll talk defense. Being uh, one of the key linebackers, a part of the defense to really kind of produce – you know, what was it like as far as preparing yourself mentally, you know, mentally and physically for this season? Uh, weight room a lot for sure. I mean, a lot of our guys were in the weight room religiously. Uh, we have a junior uh, linebacker captain, Will Atnees, and uh, me and him just working together to kind of like bring it in, step it up this year and really uh, take lead of that middle of the field. And with you being a senior and, you know, with a lot of the players coming back, did you feel like during uh, workouts and off season and all that, you know, during the summer that there are a lot of guys kind of looking at you and the other older guys to kind of looking for leadership in a way? Yeah. I mean, I don't really think about that kind of stuff when I'm out there working, but definitely like, yeah, I try to help lead and like do what I can to like step up, bring the pace and yeah. Now, I had your quarterback on before the season, and he mentioned how how that game against Torrington kind of still is in his mind, and he hasn't forgotten it. He felt like that kind of motivated and pushed him through certain days when he felt like he maybe just wasn't having a good day of practice. Maybe the gym was tough. Do you feel like this group, and I know it's early, but do you feel like this group has a chip on their shoulder after how last season ended? Yeah, 1,000%. Uh, every single year we've, since my freshman year, we've made it to the States and we lost first round both times. So I feel like just winning that first States game is really like something that is our main goal right now. Getting into the States first, obviously, but then when the game is prioritized. Were the, was there anything in particular you felt like coming into the season that you wanted to work on to make sure that you were at your best ability? Uh, I just clear my mind and like, just playing like how I need to play. Uh, yeah, in the gym so I can just be at my max strength and 
best ability to play, but really just working on footwork and just everything I need to do to be better. You mentioned clear your mind. What do you mean by that? I feel like at, when you, you play, like, thinking too much, especially I feel like in Torrington, I'm thinking, like, what's – I was just thinking too much. Mm -hmm. The more you play clear and just you're focused on the, your goal, then you just play better. So – Thus far in the season, it seems like it has been working for you. You're putting up the numbers on both sides of the ball, mainly defensively. Do you feel like you've been able to kind of play more free? And in some ways, some, you know, some players are better off thinking more. For you, it sounds like less thinking, more reaction. Is that correct? Yeah, I feel like you watch film so much and you game plan so much that once you feel comfortable like against your opponent and knowing what they're going to do, Mm -hmm. and play a lot more free and less exactly more reaction less thinking are you the kind of player that watches a lot of film or a little bit of film and what I mean by that is like to go back to what I said thinking too much if you watch too much film you may try to you know analyze it so much you're going to drive yourself crazy which one are you I'm definitely a. I I like to know what they're running, like to know what they do, their tendencies for sure. But yeah, I'm definitely watching their game film and see what they've done in past games and mm -hmm. like what their tendencies usually are. Now with the game, you know, changing what seems like every year, and I've noticed that even at the high school level, linebackers kind of like what we're seeing in the NFL. I mean, I don't know who your you know NFL team is. Mine is Dallas. So Michael Parsons being a linebacker he came in as a guy who could cover a little bit, but they have him more as basically a defensive end, just rushing to the quarterback. But then there's other guys like Roquan Smith for the, uh, for the bears who can drop back and, and cover a tight end if need be. Are you able to do both sides, you know, being able to bull rush, but also being able to cover if you need to. Yeah. When, 100%, uh, I like myself in the flats for sure. One-on-one, -on -one, I like my speed out there. But, yeah, I could definitely get to the quarterback. I mean, just a little bit of both, I guess. Now, to go to the basketball side for a second, because you played for Coach Archambault, and I know Canton's had a very good team for many, many years, especially under Coach Archambault. Um, do you feel like playing basketball kind of helps with, with that, in a sense, as far as being able to backpedal? Because you do that in basketball all the time. And what I mean by that is, like I mentioned, dropping back to cover. You do have to backpedal. Does that kind of correlate and make sense? 100%. I feel like each sport kind of just gives their own disciplines mm -hmm. and they all come together in like a lot of sports, and especially in football. Mm -hmm. You kind of see like a little bit of people that play lacrosse. They, you see their speed and how they, they have control of their body. And like with basketball, like you said, my speed and like quickness of moving left and right. So, yeah, I feel like it definitely does help basketball. Now, the first game of the season for you guys, you, you know, you lost 21 to 14 against SMSA. Um, what was it like after the game as, as far as either the staff and you guys or the coaching staff and you guys or just you guys in general? You know, because Granby typically does not lose many games during the regular season. So was there any sort of conversation had amongst you guys before game two? I feel like we came into that the first half played – like terrible, probably the worst football we played in a long time. Mm -hmm. And then that second half, we came back, shut them out. And I feel like at the end of the game, we kind of felt like, all right, like we know, we know we're a better team than what we just played today, but we, it's not like we gave up. It's not like we like dug ourselves down after that first half and we're like, all right, we're, we're over. So I feel like we knew we're a fighting team that we're not going to give up, that we'd have a good season this year. So I don't feel like it was like a, I think it was a good thing for us and we all kind of knew that yeah I think when you look at the scores the next two games I mean I think you definitely took out any sort of anger that you had from game one because you beat a very good Stafford team 35 to 7 and then you beat Crack 33 to 6 and then as you head into Windsor Lock, Suffield East Grand be a part of the three team you know three school co-op um what changes were made week two and week three that were so drastic compared to week one were you guys just executing more uh, 100% executing. Um, I think a lot of the seniors realized, all right, this is like, this is it. Like, as there's one one loss under the belt, and you don't really get a lot more if you want to make it where we want to go. Mm -hmm. so, 
we just kind of all got hungry and all got kind of woke up a little bit said all right like let's go took we were all on each other had great week of great weeks of practices mm. prepared us for the game and you've got a tough schedule i mean after you guys have uh as i mentioned before windsor lock suffield east grand but you play Cromwell, portland rockville ellington you know kind of like the second half of the schedule that is that very well could kind of dictate where you guys could be as far as making the class double S playoff. Cause you guys are there now or just being out of the playoff, you know? Nope. Uh, yeah. We got a lot of, a lot of people that want to take us out and a lot of big teams that we want to take out. So mm-hmm. I feel like those games are going to make us better. Definitely. But we just got to prepare, prepare and just, just keep going. We're already thinking ahead of a few games, but mm-hmm. I think we're taking it week by week right now. Like we're all, all focused on Winter Locks right now. Now, what is it about the Pequot man that, you know, again, last year the Pequot was in the playoffs for a number of teams. This year for class double S, I mean, you got Cromwell at four, Valley, uh, you know, you know, old Lime, all that, six, Ellington at seven. Uh, you've got you guys at nine. I mean, what is it about the Pequot? That just seems like there's just every year there's a number of teams always competing for either a playoff spot or in the case of last year, Rockville almost won the whole thing, but they ran into Killingly at the end. Uh, I think a lot of these teams are hungry. Uh, a lot of these teams are very well coached teams and very well just game plan teams. Like a lot of discipline from a lot of teams you see, like Rockville and Cromwell. Mm-hmm. Like those are just well coached, disciplined teams. So I feel like just teams like that and teams that like come together and play some good ball. Now going to you specifically, man, what sets you apart from other linebackers uh, in the state? What, like what exactly puts you in a different category than, as I mentioned, the other defensive players? Uh, I'm not like the biggest, I'm not like fastest for sure. Mm-hmm. But I feel like I just play with like a different drive and motor and like a different mindset going into each game. Like, I just, yeah, I feel like it's just a motor thing, more of a, how I play and how I mindset the game. Do you feel like your speed, because you mentioned how you're not very big, but you do have speed and you do have a lot of strength. Do you feel like that kind of offsets maybe not having the height? Because you don't have to be the biggest player to make an impact. I mean, I'm watching the Ravens and the Patriots. There's a guy on the Ravens, who's on the line, I know a little different position. He's six foot, but he weighs like 350 pounds and he clogs up the A-gap. So do you feel like that kind of sets you apart as well? Yeah, I feel my speed definitely helps me. I mean, yeah, my lateral quickness and that comes from basketball too a lot. But yeah, just being able to move left and right and get into my angles, it definitely, definitely helps me out of the linebacker position. What is Coach Shortell? Uh, meant to you, man. I mean, as you being a senior, you played for him for a number of years. I know you missed a year because of COVID. Um, but what is it meant as far as playing for Coach Shortell and just being able to put on the Granby Canton uniform for three years now? I think he's one of the, the greatest coaches I've ever had, for sure. And uh, he definitely just puts me in positions to succeed. And any coach that like wants to see you succeed and put you in positions to succeed, it's kind of like someone that you know is caring for you and always looking out for you. It's always a good thing, like, having it on your team. Is there anything in particular that he either said to you or anything like that that kind of has stuck with you? It could have been your freshman year. It could have been even during the canceled season. Anything that he said to you, Luke, that really has stuck with you to this point now? I don't think it's anything that he said that's really stuck with me, but it's more like the actions that he does. Mm -hmm. Like, he doesn't, like, want the credit for anything he really does, but you can just – everyone appreciates him. I hope he knows that. But, yeah, it's it's not really words he said, but it's actions for sure. What kind of stuff does the staff and Coach Shortell do that maybe people don't know to try to – because I saw a picture that I think it was Shortell posted. This is – it may have been after week one or week two. I don't remember. But I saw – it looked like somebody went to Costco because they had a bunch of Gatorade and chips and everything. I think you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So what kind of stuff does the staff do that maybe nobody knows, but people should know about? Uh, staff, 
any any high school football coach, I mean, they get driven crazy by their players for sure. So that's number one. Just dealing with high school kids is kudos to any person that does that. I mean, they definitely go out their way, like countless hours of film, huddle, 100%, getting us prepared for games, getting us film so we can watch and like get prepared for the games and just game planning like crazy. Like especially we have a brand new offense this year. So it definitely is getting everyone on the same page is like very challenging thing as a coach. So very much kudos to our OC and head coach for that. So yeah. 100%. You also got to mention your DC too, after all we know what you've been doing as well. So what's his name? Uh, Coach Pearl. Coach Pearl, 100%. One of the greatest defense coaches we have. Yeah, yeah. He'll get you fired up for anything. I was about to say, how fired up was he on the second, you know, fumble, you know, forced fumble return for a touchdown? Was he going nuts on the sideline? Oh, yeah. I I, I didn't really get a chance to see him, but I, I can imagine that he's going crazy. Yeah, I could imagine, too. Luke, I really appreciate you coming on. This was a lot of fun. Uh, congratulations on being the Defensive Player of the Week uh, for the CT Sports Talent Show. Uh, before I let you go, Luke, I just want to ask real quick. I know there's opportunity for you as far as the next level for sports, maybe basketball. I know you mentioned football was a possibility as well. Um, you don't have to mention the schools as far as what interest has been towards you, but do you feel like there's a strong chance that you could play in college with one of the two sports or just update you know, people on that situation? Uh, yeah, uh, I'd say there's a very good chance that I play f football in college, and that's, that's basically my main goal right now. But just focus on the high school season first and doing what I can do to, to create goals here and check off goals here before I get to that level. But, I mean, yeah, I'm just going to live up high school football as I can until then, but definitely looking for some college football. Well, again, Luke, I appreciate you coming on. This was a lot of fun. Congratulations and best of luck the rest of the season. Hopefully I see you guys in the state playoffs. Thank you. I appreciate you having me, man. No problem. I'll wrap things up here in the Connecticut Sports Talent Show. So until next time, stay safe. Remember, CT stands for Connecticut Talent. I'm Marjorie. Find them all. Enjoy their day, everybody, and be well.